Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Infamous coming back with another build. I know there's a lot of people out there that are looking for a some bow gameplay. Um, decided I would try my hand at some bow bow building for the stamina DK. So this is basically, I guess I, I called it caustic. It's a bow bow build for stam DK. For those who are looking for some really good bow gameplay, um, I'm actually currently working on this build. Uh, a little bit difficult to farm. Um, the build that I'm going to be showing you um, is the build that I'm currently working on. Um, it is for no CP BGs. For those of you who know, I do a lot of no CP battlegrounds. Uh, so this build is dedicated towards players who, who like no CP. It can, of course, work in CP. I just the really PCNA players. Uh, most of the competitive players either play BGs or they play in no CP. For those who are on PCNA, of course, I am starting up a no CP EP guild um, DC and typically AD have a lot of groups. Um, EP, on the other hand, might not doesn't have that many um, no CP PVP players. So if you're looking for a guild, feel free to check me out on PCNA. Um, the guild is called Forever Fearless. Usually posted, um, you can find it in the group in the guild finder. It's a minimum of 160 CP, of course, because you need to have the you need to have 160 gear or at least be 160 so that you can get end game gear, and of course I PVE for the purpose of going into PVP. So if you're looking for a guild on PCNA, feel free to hit me up at infamous1979. With that said, this is my stamina DK uh, bow bow build for uh, BGs and no CP. I do recommend going red guard. Um, red guard would be best in slot for this particular build um, because of martial training that uh, reduces the cost of your weapon abilities by 8% and it also reduces snares applied to you by 15% and then of course they gain max stamina and, <clears throat> and of course every 5 seconds when you deal direct damage uh, you're going to restore stamina. Primarily I like this build, I like this race for the reduction you're gonna have this is a five heavy to medium so you're gonna have reduction from medium armor whenever you put points into medium um, it reduces the cost of your abilities by two percent per piece this is a five two so it's gonna reduce the abilities by ten percent on top of the eight percent that you get from being a red guard and of course stamina abilities are innately 15 percent cheaper and then of course within the bow skill line itself um via here is here you go but the ranger passive also reduces uh the stamina cost of the abilities so i've played bow typically um most people utilize it on a back bar so i'm quite familiar on how to work a rotation from the back bar to the front bar but this is for people who are looking for bow bow uh, build <clears throat> Excuse me. So with that said, um, the build that I'm going to be showing you is here. All right. So this is my theory crafted build. I've been playing for the better part of five years. So when I put together a build, I kind of know what I'm doing and know how the build will play because in my head, I know exactly what I'm looking for, the markers I need to hit and the type of gameplay that I'm looking for. Um, I've played bow obviously with back bar. Um, so the build the will work, will work just fine. Like I said, this is a red guard. Um, the Mundus that you want, especially um, for DK, this is a bow build for DK. This is not a snipe build. This is not a cloak build. This is um, this is a bow bow build for Stam DK red guard. Primarily either red guard. Secondary would be, I'd say, uh, Imperial because they have both the reduction um, to abilities as well as um, a little recovery whenever they do direct damage. So like I said, like I said, this is in Cyrodiil, all points into stamina. In terms of the item that we're using, we're using two-piece Kina. The reason being is because it's really easy um, on a bow bow build to proc Kina with double light attacks. The light attacks come in pretty quick. So it makes it really easy um, to be able to proc Kina one, basically 100% of the time. And because you're going to be utilizing light attacks fairly often on a bow build because of, where is it, Hawkeye. All right. Whenever it says dealing damage with a light or heavy attack increases the damage of your bow abilities by 5%, and this stacks 5 times. So you can increase the damage of your bow abilities by up to 25%. And of course, that is with either light or heavy attacks, so that works really well um, with Kina, because Kina takes 2 light attacks to, um, to proc, and it gives you basically 100% uptime on 516 um, weapon and spell damage at the cost of 20% 20 
cost to your abilities. This is why I said um, either going Red Guard or going Imperial for the cost reduction um, is of benefit because the abilities are going to be 20% cheaper, even though they're innately 15% cheaper. You've got Red Guard, you're medium armor, so you have a lot of reduction, um, but the abilities are going to be still expensive, and a lot of our damage is going to come from heavy attacks as well as our regen. With that said, right, the other piece that we're using is fine piece is called the uh, the sergeant. The sergeant drops in way rest way rest sewers either one or two. There's name drops for the ring. I'm having a hell of a time trying to get the bow <clears throat> for this. So currently on live, I'm actually using double marksman. This is an old an old bow that I had from way back, back when sharpened was best in slot. I need to swap it over to Nern, and then of course swap my other one to Infused. But um, ideally, if you're into farming and if you're able to get the bow, ideally you want a bow of the sergeant. So if you're not able to get that, typically you're going to sit around 5,500 um, weapon damage, and then if you can get this, I, I this build ideally which would be the sergeant bow over the marksman bow on the front and then you're utilizing utilizing the um the master's bow which is dropped in vet dsa so there is a little bit of farming for this build but if you just wanted to get the five piece the rings are very easy to get um the chest piece drops as a main reward um so for example if you haven't done the quest for for Wayrest. Wayrest gives you the reinforced chest piece, so you don't have to go out and trade change it. It drops fairly often anyway, but if you just um, haven't done the quest, it will drop for the reinforced chest, which is what you want. You want a reinforced chest always. Um, and then, of course, on the chest, I went um, Hacky Joe, um, which is the tristat, and of course, on the, um, on the legs. So it's too heavy on the body, the main body pieces, um, with a triglyph, and then just a regular stamina enchant on um, the medium kina. Uh, so with that said, the next one that we're using is the marksman. The marksman gives you recovery, weapon damage, reduces the cost of your stamina abilities by 5%, and increases the damage of your bow abilities by 8%. And then we're using... Um, I have enough to gold out my drooly. I'm probably going to wait till I get my ideal setup. But on NA, I've been farming enough to have gold jewelry. Um, of course, you want to go all weapon damage, all robust. And this is one, two, three, um, three pieces of in pin, two well fitted. As this is a medium build, if you don't feel comfortable running with more well fitted, again, most of your damage reduction is going to come from dodge. Uh, this is a medium build, so we're able to dodge, and of course, because we're using bow bow, we're going to have access to major expedition, so this going two-piece well fitted also reduces the cost of sprinting, and of course of dodge roll. I went one divines, so that I could try to hit as close as I can to 6k. If you don't feel comfortable running a divines, or running the well fitted, you can run 6 impen with the reinforced chest, and the build you'll have slightly lower... Um, weapon damage and it'll cost you a little bit more to roll dodge um, and sprint but it's user preference so whatever you feel comfortable with um, Nurn hold bow, bow and ideally master's bow on the back bar infused with a weapon glyph on the front bar we're utilizing the reduced physical and spell resistance by uh, 1622 and this is actually more for again this is for group play for battlegrounds so if you have other magic builds um, on your team, you help them do a little bit more damage, just shy of 3% more damage to that specific target. You could run whatever you felt comfortable with. This is just what I chose um, to run on this particular build. Um, we're utilizing Silver Shards as our, I would say, main spammable. As you can see, the tooltips here, um, it does um, just shy of 70, 7750. Um, it also reduces the movement speed by 40% for 4 seconds and hits up to 5 additional people for roughly 50%. Um, on PCNA, the fully, it's, it's not correct here, it should be 50% of the damage. Um, you could, the reason I didn't want to run um, Snipe or the equivalent, or what is it, Mark Target? Not Mark Target, um, forget the other morph, what's it called, of Snipe, um, that also does the 
that also does the reduction. Um, the reason being is because a lot of the damage is going to come from heavy attacks, and so you can actually heavy attack and animation cancel it immediately with with the crossbow ability. That's why I chose that because you can't heavy attack into a snipe. It's just entirely way too slow. The reason being is because we're utilizing the sergeant, right? The sergeant uh, set increases your fully charged heavy attacks by 1634, gives you weapon damage, health recovery, and max health. Now, the reason being, as you can see here, is because we're utilizing molten armaments. So this build has really high um, heavy attack damage and no CP. You can see the heavy attack damage right here. Heavy attack damage fully buffed with a bow is going to be 10,000, um, 10,100. So a heavy attack into a silver shards will hit harder than just you spamming snipe. The other reason is being is because if you get gap closed by someone, you, you're not going to have enough time to basically notch back a snipe when someone's point blank in your face. You really need to remain active and you really need to keep your damage up consistently, which is why there's a wide array of weapon abilities here from the bow skill line. And basically we're supplementing everything else for either more damage or for utility. We're using acid spray again. Um, the reason I also liked silver shards on the front bar is because you gain an extra three percent um, from having a fighter's guild, right? It says um, increases your weapon damage by three percent for each fighter's guild ability. That's why I kind of like this, even though snipe does like literally double the damage. Um, in terms of actually being able to combo somebody down for bigger burst damage. Um, this works actually better. The other thing is that let's See if I can show here and we find a mob um, when you when you heavy attack Right So that's actually misplaced. So when you heavy attack into When you heavy attack into a uh, So release it actually returns all of the the magicka back I mean, Excuse me, it returns your stamina back So when you heavy attack and immediately let the crossbow go you actually gain all well i should say most of the stamina cost for silver shards um, a heavy attack with a bow is going to net you around 2500 stamina and of course with kina procced um, the cost is actually going to go up as you can see here right with kina up the silver shards is going to cost you 3686 but if you look here you can see the stamina return um, with a bow. Here we go. Right, the bow stamina return is twenty-seven twenty-four. So that really, the basically the burst combo costs you basically nine hundred stamina. You just have to have the thirty-six eighty-six to cast it. Um, of course, that's with Kina up. Um, and then of course, when you land the heavy attack, the animation cancel of the silver shards. Um, takes place before the heavy attack hits. So once you hit silver shards, right as the heavy attack is fully, basically fully charged, um, the silver shards will register the stamina reduction, right? It'll take away the stamina from your pool, and then the heavy attack will hit and give you back the stamina that you just lost. So basically, it's a net loss of only 900, whereas you cannot pull off a snipe heavy attack because the animation is way too slow because it's a one second cast time so even though um, it does have more range it does have more damage but in terms of being able to combo people staying mobile um, and basically not just being a snipe spammer we're utilizing silver shards i liked it i think it works out much better um, Acid spray is nice for the upfront damage if you're fighting like for example a Nightblade. Um, it gives you something else to pull them out of cloak as well as giving you a pretty pretty nice damage over time over four seconds. Um, lightweight trap is there for the upfront damage. It gives you access to a root as well as the damage over time. You can see it's 12 seconds, uh, 12,000 as well as increasing your critical damage by 10%. We're running 32% critical. You can see the stats here. 22k HP, 13, almost 13.5 Magicka, just shy of 28k stamina. This is a recovery. The only recovery that we're getting um, is what the pot is our stamina recovery. And most of our recovery is going to come from ultimates. Stamina recovery will come from pot. And then, of course, um, 
utilizing molten you're not going to spam this um, for stamina but every time you do recast it it's going to give you back um, a little bit of stamina but a lot of our stamina is going to come back from red guard passive um, dk passive when you utilize an ultimate as well as pot and then of course heavy attacking as they're going to be a lot of heavy attacks primarily for the burst combo of heavy attack silver shards into a stun into a bow stun that's the next ability that you can see again um, this ability is a part of the fighters guild so it gives you an additional three percent to your overall weapon damage that's six percent we have two of them our burst heal is going to come from drain shot you can see the drain shot heal has a tooltip of 12k and the stun has almost a, a tooltip of 7600 it's got nice range on it do not lead with a stun i repeat that do not be the plate be the player that leads every encounter with a stun you want to save this when you actually get ganked you need a you need a big burst to heal because we're not running vigor the other ability that we're using is cauterize it was a bit difficult to work out how i was going to make this build work to maximize um, the amount of damage as well as having a, a, a burst heal and a heal over time cauterize seemed to work the best um, unfortunately because we're utilizing cauterize we don't have access to um, major savagery which is the critical buff we're going to be getting that from a pot also we don't have access to major brutality we're also going to be getting major brutality um, from a pot so this is a little bit of an expensive build because you're going to be utilizing um, brutality potions that give you weapon damage weapon critical and stamina return um, because molten armament does not give you um, the major brutality buff it will give you the minor brutality buff because it's in the it's in the skill line of earth and heart and whenever you cast an earth and heart ability you automatically activate mountain's blessing which gives you minor brutality for 20 seconds as well as giving you ultimate every six but you're not going to be casting this every six seconds um it also activates um what's it called um, when you cast an earth and heart ability you restore 990 stamina but you're only going to be utilizing this when you need to reactivate the heavy attack buff as well as giving you um, major sorcery but the major sorcery is kind of pointless so the reason that I chose this was because one heavy attacks with a bow do a lot of damage two it also buffs the sergeant set right so it increases the um, the 1650 gains an additional 50% um, because of this buff because of molten armaments it's kind of why I went with this route I also did not want to be a snipe spammer I wanted to create a build um, that was very that had a lot of play style to it and it took skill and you, most people that just sit there and spam snipe they're easy kills um, and you can't really spam snipe point blank at somebody and really gain the kill you really need other abilities that you can utilize um, to secure the kill so um, the reason, of course, for Cauterize, it does give you the Major Prophecy, which I don't think really is going to be useful for this build, but it gives you a heal over time. You can see the heal over time is um, 7253. That's four ticks. That's basically 28,000 over the course of 15 seconds. So your primary heal that you're going to get is Cauterize, and then when you get low, you're going to wait to CC your opponent with Drain Shot for the burst heal of 12k. On the back bar, our only form of execute is Poison Injection. You can see it there with a 7k tooltip, along with a 13k dot. That, of course, does more, does more damage as the, your opponent is taking more damage and they get lower. This was kind of a flex spot. Originally, I was not going to use Noxious. I was actually going to use Wings. Um, but since I don't have really good Magicka recovery, even though we're using a good amount of Magicka, you really want... Um, you have three magic abilities that you're going to be keeping up um, and, and without really good regen I really didn't want to stress the the magic on this build by utilizing wings so it it's kind of up to you if you want to toss wings in there but you will obviously do more damage with noxious so for example if you get gap closed by someone you can immediately bar swap drop noxious on them because this build is designed to be played fairly close it's designed to be played near your team you want to stay um, as close to your team as possible so that you're not getting picked off like most snipers they are like sitting off in the distance somewhere all by themselves and they get gap closed you know by like another another night blade or by an, an entire team that just respawn and then they basically die this build is not designed 
um, to be played that way. It's designed to be played near your team so that you can drop your AoEs on the ground, for it, like, like, which is why I like Arrow Barrage. It's got a 7 meter radius. I um, mean, it takes every half second, and this is really good um, for pulling Night Blades out of Cloak. It does really good damage. Um, it's about 3,500 per second, last 8 seconds, with an 8 meter radius. Like I said, we're using um, Molten Armaments and then, of course, um, Volatile Armor. Um, this is kind of a flex spot. I think it works just fine. Um, it's basically your protection in case you have enough ultimate to use and you're getting attacked by multiple multiple opponents. Corrosive is really good to give you 100% um, penetration as well as giving you the damage reduction. But the main ultimate that we're going to utilize, and in my opinion, this ultimate should be changed. It's entirely too strong. Bows bows if if you're a player like me i've been playing for the past five years longer than five years i know how to make builds as you can see this is a really strong build you know we're literally sporting almost 6k weapon damage on a bow bow build and this is no cp this is a no cp build and the effective weapon damage is 85 53 and i can make a stronger build than this one that utilizes a proc set but i i don't use proc sets um i like skillful builds i like builds that take um, the account, the person who's playing the build, you know, I like to play the build, I don't like the builds basically to play themselves. If you're utilizing a lot of proc sets, you're basically, Zenimax is playing for you, you're not playing the game. But in my opinion, um, the bow ultimate, in my opinion, should be changed. One, because it's a channel, it cannot be dodge rolled, it also cannot be cloaked, you can't cloak um, the bow ultimate. It also does entirely too much damage. Um, it is Quite expensive it can be light of sighted it can be blocked um, but the last thing you want to do is block this it hits every I believe every second deals ridiculous amounts of damage but it is actually really good for killing um, night blades in particular because there's so many night blades and BGs where you can if you come across you get gap closed by a night blade you can heavy attack into a silver shard into a drain shot the drain shot will stun them knock them back and then take a look at that tooltip it's pretty disgusting. 79,000 damage with an additional 47,000 over the next 8 seconds. Like, literally, you have this up. It also gives you immunity to um, disabling effects such as being stunned or rooted or slowed, which is, in my opinion, pretty stupid. Um, if anything, it should make you stationary for the duration. Or you can animation cancel it if you need to. Um, but it's entirely too strong as you can see like literally nothing will survive being hit by that ultimate the ultimate has a total tooltip of almost 130,000 damage over the course of uh, 12 seconds so that's a huge amount of damage it's a ridiculous amount of damage but it is what it is um, the food that we're using is um, tristat we're using tristat food um, you can see the buffs here the uh, abilities here like I said before um, all points go into stamina um, weapon damage on all of the weapon damage on all of your jewelry and then of course ideally you want that master's bow on the back bar so I'm currently working on this build right now I've got everything except for actually I need the um, the master's bow um, for the back bar and then I need to get the sergeant I have been farming the, the way rest one and two literally for the past two days I put in probably like 16 hours of grinding and have not yet come across a bow um, in any way shape or form so I was like you know what um, I'm gonna play this version of it which is um, running the sergeant jewelry on the front and then of course I'll switch all this to robust and then put um, Weapon glyphs on all of them, and then switch this to obviously Nern Honed, infused on the back bar. And so, basically, what that build will look like will be just literally just as similar. The only thing that you'll be missing will be the 300 um, from the Master's Bow. And of course, that 300 is only um, applied to the person that has poison injection on them, which is why it's poison injection is on the, on the back bar. Um, so, basically, if you're running this exact setup, you're going to be sitting at roughly 59.91. And then, of course, if you're running the setup that I'm running on live, not that big of a difference, but you're going to be losing about 450 overall between the major and minor buff um, for brutality. 5500, still, still really good. Um, so, 
if you're not really looking to grind a lot, um, you can actually buy um, master marksmen's from basically any any of the traders guild. It's easy. It's easy to buy. It's fairly cheap, um, and then literally there's name drops for a stamina version of the sergeant's necklace um, and then there's name drops for the rings but they drop in healthy no matter what it's really easy to farm um, the chest piece like i said before you can get as a reward by completing the dungeon um, in way rest 2 and then of course you know it's easy to get the the sergeant pants um, but this particular build if you if it's a little grindy to get the master's bow and I, God help me, the day I get the uh, the sergeant bow, um, has basically this build. I hope you guys uh, get get out there and to test it. I will be putting up some some gameplay. I'm currently leveling uh, the bow. I'm 32, but I'm telling you the build will play just fine. So look forward to some gameplay. Probably some probably next week, early next week, as I'll be grinding this weekend to get this to 50. Get all my abilities morphed, kind of gold everything out, um, and then I'll be good to go. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys uh, enjoy this video. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Appreciate everybody who does subscribe. And, of course, feel free to um, check me out on Twitch. And if you're looking for more Battleground builds, feel free to check out battleofthebuild.com. It is a site dedicated to no CP and BG gameplay, as well as with tutorials on how to build, um, PvP clips, PvP tips and tricks. If you're not sure of um, what class or what race, I put up two videos here. How to choose a class, how to choose a race, and then of course how to create a build. Um, what kind of markers in terms of no CP you should be looking to hit. And basically if you're looking for um, stamina, magic, or, or hybrid builds for basically all of the classes, um, I post that here along with a werewolf build for those who like playing werewolf. Feel free, to, feel free to check out battleofthebuild.com. And then, of course, you can always check me out on Twitch at InfamousNYC. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.